Dear God, I got one question I need to know, do revolutionaries go to heaven? And if so, may their legacies last forever And they seeds grow Tell them that we love them so And never let them die slow It's like we cursed to be born black We was kings and queens, now look where we at I know it won't be long before we take it back I just hope I live long enough to see it happen And that's a fact Cause one thing when you pro-black you might love your people, but they may not love you back For more than 400 years, we've been under attack We survived slavery and then they gave us crack Do revolutionaries go to heaven? 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 I wanna know Do revolutionaries go to heaven? I hope so Do revolutionaries go to heaven? I wanna know Do revolutionaries go to heaven? I hope so Peace and blessings, family. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Ty Yeh Speaks. Today we got a very special guest in the house, um, author, uh, doctor. You know, he does a lot of things. Uh, he's going to discuss finances in the black community. Um, so without further ado, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, for the viewers who may not know, please let them know uh, what your name is and definitely let them know where you're from. Uh, greetings. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is Jared Ball. I'm a professor of Africana and Media Studies at Morgan State University. Uh, host a website and show called I Mix What I Like, I Mix What I Like.org with Black Power Media at blackpowermedia.org. And uh, I'm the author of The Myth and Propaganda of Black Buying Power. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Oh, yeah. Likewise. It's definitely an honor. So we get right into it. OK, so my first question would be, what is black power and your, from your perspective? Oh, well, black power, from my perspective, starts with uh, black community control over the institutions that govern those communities economically, socially, politically. Uh, ultimately, it means what uh, it means for the All African People's Revolutionary Party, that is a unified Africa, United States of Africa under scientific socialism uh, and with uh, a diaspora that benefits greatly from that, for, that sword and level of unity. So, but uh, that's my shortest answer, I guess. Right, right, no, that's cool, that's cool. Okay, now my next question. Now, what is buying power for the viewers who may not know? Well, there's the reality and there's the myth. The myth says buying power is the one or more trillion dollars that Black people have and could use differently to, to change our collective inequality. What it really is, is just an assessment of how much any community has to spend on the goods they do not own and that are marketed to them. Uh, and we've been intentionally confused for a long time on that issue. Okay, okay. So that goes into my next question. Uh, would you be able to tell the viewers a little bit about your book, uh, The Myth and Propaganda of Black Buying Power? Sure. Uh, the short of it is, is just a, a, a summary of uh, about 10 years or more of, of work of mine on trying to discover the origins and the 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 uh, impact and purpose of the concept. Uh, and so the book just traces some of the history uh, as to where buying power as a concept originates and then how it's been used primarily by a collaboration between a black business and media class and uh, the broader white corporate state structure to convince black people to move away from political activism and organizing and towards black capitalism uh, as a method to uh, respond to uh, uh, inequality. And so the book is just an attempt, uh, and I think does well to prove that buying power as a concept has been intentionally reframed and rebranded and used as a weapon against black people uh, in ways unlike any other community and uh, that the real situation facing Black people is a lack of political power, uh, which going back to your previous question is what uh, 
uh, about black power is what what real revolutionaries and and uh, you know thoughtful people want is to be as Dr. John Henry Clark used to say responsible handlers of power. So that's what the book is trying to do. Okay, okay. Thank you for breaking that down.